Hello and welcome to Army of Crime, the internet's only podcast. My name is Dustin, and I'm here with my co-host, Matt. Hello. So on each episode of the season, we are talking about a comic book. And the comic book that we are talking about on this episode is entitled Paramus, The City and Oblivion by Alberto Breccia and Juan Sastrain. And this is a comic book that I believe was originally, uh, it's made by two Argentinian uh, people. And it was, I think, originally published in Italy. And now this is a collected volume of basically four volumes of this uh, comic series, Paramus, um, that is set during the uh, military dictatorship that ruled over Argentina during the 70s and into the 80s. Is that correct? Yes. First three stories in this book uh, are heavily, heavily involve uh, living under a sort of military dictatorship and their and the upcoming referendum that Argentina was going to have involving the uh, dictatorship. And this is actually the second uh, Alberto Breccia comic book we've discussed on this podcast, as we previously had talked about Mort Cinder, which was another uh, book that was put out by uh, Fantagraphics as part of their effort to collect uh, Alberto Breccia's work. So, Matt, what did you think of Paramus, The City and Oblivion? It's definitely, there's a lot going on here. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot going on, and we 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 fudged our rule a little bit for this season. We were trying to do things made. I think we're trying to stick to the modern age, but it was published in 2020 in English. I think for the first time, so I think that counts. Yeah, it's interesting. I uh, it's so it goes through. There's a lot going on here, as you said. The main character is an amnesiac, which is kind of a storytelling convention in and of itself. In this world where he's kind of traveling through. Uh, these there's like a fascist military dictatorship. Um, visually, there's a lot of interesting things going on with the, you know, the the fascists are often represented with like these skull faces, right? Um, it's almost like a fool's journey for the first part because they kind of wander through different scenarios, some of which are kind of uh, absurd, right? There, there's an element of absurdism, um, like he goes to a a, a set for a movie studio that doesn't make real movies. He goes to an island um, run by a Mr. White Snow where the, the production of, or they just harvest guano. And they meet, uh, who would they meet? Like Frank Sinatra. Um, well, the, kind, of, uh... kind of bumbling, like kind of almost like bumbling through history to some degree. What With the, the background story being the, um, almost like the struggle to s- protect something intangible like an intangible cultural um, sanctity from the, from the dictatorship. And there's yeah. the. Yeah. So there, yeah, it's, it's, it is very much kind of like a rambling Picard esque sort of story with the first three set during the, the dictatorship and alongside Paramus, which is a character who is actually a, uh, like a resistance character who abandons his comrades at the very beginning of the story on the eve of a police raid. And then, He's like so uh, overcome with like guilt that he, through some sort of quasi mystical means, has his uh, own like memory wiped. And then Paramus is the name of the brand of jacket that he wears because he has no, doesn't know what his actual name is. And then the other characters are uh, Canel, is it Canelonis? Is a Uruguayan meat packer. And then there's a guy who's just named the enemy who is a fighter pilot who like crashed on an island who they permit to attempt to escape once a year as like sort of a patriotic uh, event. Um, Anyway, and then also Jorge Luis Borges, the actual real life writer, is like one of the central characters in this story. Um, And I don't know about you, but I felt like and also Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Uh, is also like a central character. And, you know, like culturally, there's a lot of like uh, very specific like cultural touchstones 
going on here that for like an Argentinian audience would probably make sense. But uh, not having read any Borges or any or not having read like 100 years of solitude, I did occasionally find myself um, like I was missing um, some context for this. I don't know if you had that feeling as well. Yeah, I mean, for sure, if, if you had read, um, if you were a little more up on the, like, uh, l let's say, like, the Latin American literary scene and um, some of those books that you meant, yeah, you, you, you would get a lot more out of it. Well, you know what's interesting, though, actually, I, I, I like the military dictatorship stuff, and that's kind of in the, I would say, like, the first half focuses on that the most. Um so while yes, there are some some things that you would have to be probably more well read on, um, like you said, a hundred years of solitude, um, um, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, and like there's probably a lot of other things that I didn't pick up on. Some of the stuff with the military dictatorship I thought was interesting, like the the fascists kind of roaming around. There's a part where they have a giant banner that says "Vote yes or yes," right? For like the have, uh... like a fake vote, like whether you want a military dictatorship or a dictatorship of men in suits. And oh, they're like, right. Yeah, and they that come was out right. with a speech and they're like, we will be just as oppressive, but it will be slightly different. Right. It's like, do you want the the wingtip shoe on your throat or the military boot? Yeah. And that probably would mean more to someone who actually lived in a dictatorship. But I thought that was interesting. Um, there's a storyline where they're trying to find they're trying to rescue certain people who re represent like the soul of the city. It takes place in like a fictional uh, city, I think that's kind of a stand-in for for Latin America as a whole in some ways, or Argentina specifically, and they have to find the people who represent like the soul of the city, and this is like yeah. a way to, to save to save like the cultural essence or something from the dictatorship. And I thought that was interesting. It goes to some weird places. I mean, it's like at some points it's like pornographic. Uh, yeah, and then... like there's a part where a character has to have like a I can't remember the exact details, but he. One of those people, I think, that you mentioned that, that that the main characters have to rescue is like a guy who is having some sort of contest where he has to have sex with all of these women. But then the contest organizers have found like all these like, you know, repulsive women uh, for him to have sex with or whatever. And it's like a whole story of him uh, banging all these women, which is, you know, more than a little bit, quote unquote, problematic. Uh, for I don't know what reasons. the translation is. The main, but in English, the the character's name is just a phallus. Yeah, yeah. Um, so and then there's it, like a part where there's like, um, you know, like Mister White Snow, and then there's an island with seven dwarfs on it. Um, so like you mentioned, absurd before, like a lot of the action that's going on here. I mean, it's hard to like give a quick summation of the overall story because like so much is happening. And yeah. yeah, like a lot of it is extremely absurd. The um the fourth section is all about them. It's like another sort of like mythic uh, quest of gathering the teeth of the famous tango singer Gardel, who I had never heard of before. So I had to look this guy up on Wikipedia, but he died in a plane crash in Medellin, which is uh, in Colombia, and the characters are tasked with gathering up. They have his skull, and they have to like gather up all of his teeth to put into his skull. Um, and that's the one, the fourth story, which is set post dictatorship. Right. Yeah. The, like the quest to retrieve Gardel's teeth is another symbolic journey. They're trying to like restore some kind of cultural essence, right? right. Um, after the fall of the dictatorship. But they're they're meeting they meet like Frank Sinatra. Um, they're getting the teeth of a famous tango singer to restore the soul of a nation following the dictatorship. Uh, so it's like that absurdist like I mean it's like a magical realism in in a lot of ways. Um, but yeah, if you want to talk about the art, I mean I think the art is probably the main draw, right? Um, it's that very very detailed black and white, um, very like inky, uh, very expressive blacks art that is like the faces that it captures like i think the, the emphasis is really like the faces and like the craggly lines i mean the art is amazing you could like frame it and put it on your wall yeah and, and I, I, that's if that that's that's probably what you were where you were going for there yeah and 
you know, we had previously talked about Mort Cinder, also drawn by Alberto Breccia. And I feel here there's le- le- much less emphasis on realism, and the characters are generally drawn more in, like, caricature. Yeah. Um, like, you have enormous, uh, you know, like, giant, like, uh, characters, and you have, like, these dwarfs. And other than, like, basically Paramus himself and uh, Borges... Like, most of the other characters are drawn in a much more, like, broad sense. And, of course, like you mentioned, the uh, all the goons of the dictatorship were all drawn with, like, skull heads. So it's still, you know, it's very much like that sort of dark black, uh, inky, it's a good word to put it, like, art from Mort Cinder, but, even, but, like, pushed to a more absurd, you know, less realistic place. Which, yeah, it's uh, Alberto Breccia is pretty, it's pretty amazing to behold. I mean, I can understand why Fantagraphics is apparently committed to releasing these uh, books that he's done. As I don't know if this stuff had really been available or widely available in English before, but he's pretty, he's pretty amazing. Though I have to say, and I don't know how you felt about Paramus as a whole, but I might have preferred, like, Mort Cinder to this, just because I found the very, like, rambling, absurd nature of this to maybe occasionally be to its, like, detriment. I don't know what you think, but, like, also, this doesn't really have, like, as part of that, like, mythic uh, quality, the, uh, the characters in here are not really so much characters as just, like, symbols representing like these different ideas almost right because two of the four characters don't even have names right yeah i think if you were to make me compare i would take mort cinder probably over um paramus uh which again he doesn't have a name he's named after a brand of, of raincoat and then there's the other guy who's just called the enemy yeah so so i i would agree with you in that the characters are kind of thin um if you were into that you know that like fool's absurdist fool's journey magical realism uh angle and you would probably like it better but i i I, if you had if you force me to compare the two i think i would take more cinder although the art in both is amazing yeah yeah i would definitely not you know disagree with that and like i said i certainly will admit to perhaps a lack of cultural awareness on my part to like fully grasp you know, this was obviously made in response to what was going on at a very specific time and place. Yeah. In terms of attacking the Argentinian dictatorship. So, yeah, I mean, as I mentioned, there are things that I felt like I was probably missing out on. Of course, the uh, the United States of America occasionally makes some appearances and not in a, a good light, as you would expect. Castro is also in here. Oh, that's, yeah. Castro's in there. Um, they talk about like the the gringos are coming as a, you know, like um, as a stated fact, right? Like at some point the gringos will show up to to do something. As as a I, you know, there's obviously a long history there of um, American intervention in in Latin America, yeah. Um, which would be, which which I think is an interesting thing for them to talk about, certainly. Um, and that's probably some of the stuff I would find I found more interesting in it. Um. Again, probably holds a little more emotional heft, certainly if you were from Latin America, if you're from Argentina. Uh, but like some of the stories, you know, they do deal with like imperialism, right? Because they're they're on this island, um, like the, the Guano Island is run by Mr. White Snow, who's just it doesn't really explain how he's in charge of it. But he's like some kind of, um, you know, crooked bureaucrat that got himself put in charge of a foreign island. Um, and then like the revolutionary there is basically saying like one day you know, the gringos will show up and push him out. And that then that's like their chance for revolution. So that I thought that was interesting. I, I you know, overall, I did like it. Um, yeah, it, it probably would mean I'm guessing it would mean more to someone, um, you know, like you're saying from Argentina or with more of a background in like Latin America. But there are there are some areas like the I would say the the fact that every probably every female character in it is a prostitute uh, or pretty close. I mean, like, not great. It is what it is. Yes, that's definitely not ideal. I mean, yeah, it's very broad and very, like, absurd. So, yes. Yeah, I think you might be right that, like, every female character is a prostitute. And also, I don't know how you felt about this, but 
the way that he like draws like black American soldiers was kind of like really weird to me. Like they almost look sort of like minstrelly. I don't know if yeah. you noticed that, but I mean yeah. it's part of like the whole absurd thing that um not to Right. I wasn't sure how I should feel about that coming from um you know, an artist from from uh from Argentina. But yeah. Yeah, so there there's some things in there that some people might not go for. I, I would be very interested in reading through, you know, like the like the Alberto Breccia library. Um, there's a lot of things that he has done that are just now coming into English. And and that's part of that whole universe of comics that we don't we don't even get to see really. Right. Until they until they get trans somebody translates them or whatever. What did you think of the the story where there's a British guy who has uh, a child from like every country that he's ever visited, and he's like a British explorer? Yeah, uh, I thought that was it, interesting. That was one of the ones I liked. Um, he has like I don't know dozens of like illegitimate children who are all mixed race of some kind from various countries in the world. Right. It's an interesting take on like British imperialism, certainly because that's right, cause it's kind of what the, the British Empire, you know, is like. Is it's everywhere. It has its fingers in everything at some point, point. Um, and then they kind of pull back. But there's like a legacy out there. Yeah, and the backdrop for that is the Falklands War, which of course was a war between Britain and Argentina. And yeah, I thought that was that. This is when they're searching for the tango singer's teeth. Yeah. And yeah, I thought that that was uh, a pretty nice little chapter as well. Yeah. It's sort and of I... like a absurd symbolic representation of, you know, the vast reach of British colonialism all around the world. And sitting here as we are in the year of our Lord 2021, the story where he's in France and there's like fascist thugs roaming about. Oh, yeah, that was good. There's a. Uh... Yeah, like basically like white supremacists in France who are yeah yeah that was a a pretty good one as well yeah yeah and and that's kind of the thing that I, I found a little interesting was seeing some of those issues um you know kind of reflected back at you from an international perspective because as much as we like to think that we are you know in America we're super duper special most of our problems are reflected back at us from from other countries in a variety of ways yeah i mean it, it uh it definitely gives you sort of a global the global scope of you know fascism and militarism and imperialism around the world did you like the part with frank sinatra where they had a literal dick measuring contest that was a little strange Little strange, yeah. One of the plot points is um, an attempt to win a, a penis measuring contest. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like that, that's like that absurd, absurdist, uh, fool's journey, magical realism thing, um, right? That you're gonna win, you're gambling for the detached teeth of a famous tango singer with a penis measuring contest against with Frank Sinatra at the behest of Frank Sinatra at the behest of Frank Sinatra. Yeah. Well, you were the one who who who, uh, who picked Paramus for us to read. Uh, do you feel like it was worth? Do you feel like it was worth the read? Yes, I um I had picked Paramus because I mean I had when we had done Mort Cinder that was just kind of on a whim, and and I had found myself really loving uh, Mort Cinder as I recall. We were both kind of like really big fans of that one, so that made me want to get into this. Uh, Another Alberto Breccia drawn, though working with a different writer this time, uh, Juan Sesterain instead of, I believe that was uh, Osterheld. Was he the? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's why I had picked Paramus, and I definitely think that Paramus is worth a read. I mean, we talked about some of the various enjoyable things about it. I did not appreciate it, probably as much as Mort Cinder, which is not to say that it's bad by any means, but it's, um, you know, a very different sort of comic. It's because Mort Cinder is almost like a a horror like tinge to like look through history, whereas this is much more of like a comic absurd, you know, rambling journey through the mythical underbelly of fascist Argentina and South America in general. So overall, I did enjoy Paramus. It's a strange one. I mean, I what I would say that for it's definitely worth reading for Alberto 
Breccia alone. I mean, he is such a fantastic and beautiful and distinctive visual style as a cartoonist that I'm pretty much on the hook for anything that he draws. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would recommend it for um, for the art, for the kind of the concept, but I, I don't think it would be for everyone. But yeah, that, that art is... is uh is is one you want to write home about for sure um i love the fact that it looks so and we talked about this in mort cinder that it looks so physical right you can see like the ink like the yeah like you can almost see like like, like when you're when you're of the ink yeah and it's like it's you can like almost physical see art. like where his hand might have like rubbed ink on the page you know like yeah like it, it really looks like something that a guy sat down and like crafted with his hands in a set of tools. Right. You know? And, and, and to sound like a thousand year old man, you know, you don't always see that anymore. Right. Yeah. I mean, of course this being an older book too, it's like, it's a, a relic of really like crafting something that looks physically crafted, but yeah, I mean, it definitely like you can say uh, very confidently that an Alberto Breccia book does not look like any comics coming out right now. I mean, it probably right. didn't look like any comics coming out at that time either. Yeah, yeah. And I did like to see his the style like sort of evolves from, you know, from Mort Cinder. It's not a huge sample size, but he, but he's it's different. You know, he's he's bringing something different um, for the source for the subject matter. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely like adapting for the more like absurd nature of this story which i appreciate yeah for sure though it's like with all of the ins and outs that paramus goes through it's hard you know it definitely has like its ups and downs sort of it's, it, the story is dense it's like um and it's broken into fairly small chapters yeah so there's a lot of like small things happening um it is kind of a dense story it's kind of a weirdly dense story for how in many ways, the plot is usually like there's two of the four segments are like basically quest narratives to retrieve an item or, or like a, an object or a thing for like entirely symbolic purposes. Yeah. Yeah. It's like scattered with weird grotesqueness and like but also, you know, grace notes of like beauty or of humanity. Yeah. Like the circus, the circus. That's a resistance group. Yeah. Which we didn't even talk about like all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah, it's just like sp sprinkled liberally throughout. Also, I mean, and then there's also a part where they give some guy that they're trying to steal something from a general. They give him diarrhea, and then there's like a full like two pages of him like running, like screaming to the bathroom. Sophisticated, sophisticated yeah. stuff. So, anywho, that this was another episode of the Army of Crime podcast. If you enjoyed it, or perhaps even if you hated it, you can go leave a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever else that you grab your podcasts. And you can go wherever to our website. Wherever good pods are cast. And you can, when you're there, you can smash the subscribe button. Yeah, and, and then you can go to armyofcrime.com and look up any of our other episodes or leave comments and tell us we're stupid. Um, anything else to mention here, Matt? Well, I would say if you're going to go through the effort, you know, just throw five stars, five star review out there. Might as well. Might as well. You know, wherever wherever you cast your pods. Um, you know, we like putting the show out. Uh, it, it just it gives you a little warm fuzzy, a little warm fuzzy to have a review. You don't have to pay us. I'm not. We're not. We're not asking for your, for your hard-earned money. You know, just th you throw some throw us. some stars out there. I mean, you can send us money, I, I guess, if you want. Yeah. But just throw some stars out there. Throw some stars out there. there yeah. You go. I remember, kids, always vote yes. I am an uneducated uh, plebeian in many ways. Aren't you a teacher? Well...